Hi, I'm Rory Rolfs, working at the University of California, Berkeley, presenting to you a video abstract about a paper I wrote along with Aaron Murphy, Yoon Song, and Mani Slotkin called The Influence of Relatives on the Efficiency and Error Rate of Familial Searching. In 2008, the California Attorney General announced that familial searches would be performed in particular cases, making California the first state with a clear policy about its use of familial searching. Then in 2010, the first suspect was identified with this method in California. Earlier this year, an article was published calling into question the usefulness of familial searching in New York City, since there it seems to have unearthed a number of false leads and no solid suspects. Unfortunately, the vast majority of jurisdictions which practice familial searching using their own not necessarily robust methodology do not make their methods transparent, so I can't investigate or speak about them. Fortunately, Steve Myers and colleagues at the California Department of Justice did publish the details of the method which is used in California. I can't get into all of that right here, but I will say that they use a likelihood approach considering both autosomal and Y-chromosome DNA and compute likelihood ratios comparing the probabilities of the observed partial match assuming a specific relationship, like siblings, and assuming no genetic relationship. To estimate the false positive rate, or how often unrelated people will be misidentified as relatives, I considered population genetic allele frequencies from five previously specified groups delineated by social race. Considering all of these groups, I simulated pairs of unrelated individuals, ran the parent-offspring identification method, and the sibling method, as specified by Myers and all. In the top table, we see the resulting estimated false positive rates for the parent-offspring test, and in the bottom table, the estimated false positive rates for the sibling test. Generally, these rates seem very low. However, they're non-trivial in the context of large databases the size of California's, which has over 1.4 million entries. After estimating the false positive identification rates between unrelated people, I was curious about the identification rates between Y chromosome sharing relatives. So first I considered Y sharing parent and offspring relationships and siblings, which are directly tested in the Myers and Mall method. But then I was wondering about more distant Y chromosome sharing relatives, like half siblings, cousins, half cousins, and second cousins. Using a similar simulation scheme, I estimated familial identification rates for these near and distant Y chromosome sharing relatives. I was particularly interested in distant Y chromosome sharing relatives because some of these genetic relationships are unknown, making them impossible to investigate, and because we generally have more distant than near genetic relatives, so they're more likely to be in the database. I'm going to show you the identification rates I estimated for the parent-offspring test on the left and the sibling test on the right for a number of different true relationships and population groups. I'll start with the parent-offspring test, where power to identify a true parent-offspring relationships is high at about 99%. When we look at more distant relatives, we see non-zero genetic identification rates. Specifically, about 1 in 100 times cousins will be identified as parent-offsprings, and about 1 in 1,000 times second cousins will be identified as parent-offsprings. In the sibling test, we see similar high power at 77 to 94%. However, again, we see distant relatives being misidentified as siblings. About 14 to 42% of half-sibs and 1 to 10% of half-cousins half will be called siblings. Thanks to all of my organizing, housing, and funding sources, and to my collaborators, and mostly thank, to you, thank you for listening.